Hey everybody, it's your boy, so Josh so I keep back with another video, you know what, anyways. Sorry guys, I have been, I have been on YouTube lately with my videos. I have actually had to get rid of my original channel because of, got a new phone and my new channel is now this channel. But I couldn't get back to my old channel, so all my subscribers that are on my new channel, are on this channel. Um, so I'm on this channel now, so if any one of you that are subscribed to me, come to here. Um, I'm posting, you know. I'll be trying to post every day. Got the iPhone 8S, the Nets, the 8 Plus, our 8 Plus, the new phone. That's what I'm using. The video of this right now. Anyways, guys, today I'm going to be talking about my favorite, favorite Disney movie of all time. The, mo the movie that molded me into the man I am today. Okay? And that movie is Nightmare Before Christmas. I absolutely love Nightmare Before Christmas. It's my favorite movie. By the way, fun fact. Nightmare Before Christmas t is the mo took 135 hours to complete in two years. In two years. Two years, 135 hours of man, wor man work to complete. That's how long it took to make that movie. And it still holds up to this day, that movie, to me. To me, it holds up to this day. It, it teaches you life lessons. And it has a great message in one of the songs. The very first song you ever hear. This is Halloween. And it has the, the message. And it's sung by the two, um, don't know what they exactly are, but they're kids in Halloween time. And their, last, they, their line is, Tender dumplings everywhere, everywhere. Life is no fun. Without a good scare. In there lies the truth. Life isn't fun without a good scare. You can't have fun in life and not be scared at something in life. Fear is what drives every, every person in the world. For example, things in the world, in, the, in history, wouldn't have come about without fear. We wouldn't, if we weren't afraid about the Nazis, we wouldn't have entered World War II. If we weren't afraid... Um, of the communists, we wouldn't have had the NATO and everyone else and people like that joining in to fight communism. If we weren't afraid of, I don't know, uh, Afghanistan and, and terrorists, we wouldn't have people that are fighting terrorists today. So, in there lies the key. Life's no fun without a good stare. Now, I'm not saying any of that was fun. I'm Jewish. I, I, I had a family that survived the Holocaust, and I know it wasn't fun for him at all. His entire family died, except for the ones that lived in, in Canada, because that's the ones that escaped, I guess. But still, his entire family died, and I'm not going to say it was fun. I'm just saying... Life is no fun without getting scared at sometimes in it. For me, for example, I was a f petrified of clowns as a kid. Now, here's the difference. I wasn't afraid of the clown in the movie, in the Nightmare Before Christmas movie, really, but real-life clowns, like the ones you would see, I was petrified of. I would not go near them until the age of seven. I was also afraid of trade cheese, and I actually did not like trade cheese a lot either. Till one day, my dad just, I used to, here's what happened. There used to be this thing with Chinese cheese, and I don't think he does it anymore. But even before parties, the parties were being used, even when a party was going on, he would go through all around those other tables besides the party table, and just, you know, say hello, you know, get maybe get a picture in. Whatever he would come to my table if I was with my parents, I would hide in that table for goddamn life. I would not want to be seen by him. I, I just would see him coming, but bye-bye. And I would go under the table. I did not want to be near him. Till one day that my dad just had enough of it, and he pushed me right in front of, right, right me into him and said, I'm tired of this. And he said, I'm tired of this. And he pushed me right to him. And he's like, and I gave him a high five. I was first afraid of shit. But then he gave me a hug, and I gave me a high five. And I'm like, oh, it's not that bad, I guess. Uh, okay, I'm not afraid no more. But to this day, that was not. I didn't. I do not trust clowns. Do I like clowns? Sometimes yes. Sometimes no. Sometimes I don't find them really funny. No, I don't find them funny. Sometimes do I like them? Eh. Now I learned how to get around, get away from a clown when when they when they're just annoying you. You just step on their feet. 
Yeah, that will work. Step on their feet. If you are getting, if you're not afraid of cops but you hate them annoying you, just step on their foot. It works every time. That worked for me a lot. Anyways, so the reason why I love the Number Four Christmas so much is because it's an entire story. It just oh my god, it's about true love in its most interesting form. It has love. It has it has um depression. It has. A midlife crisis in which, well, even though he's not really alive or he's not really dead, it has a midlife crisis. See, it speaks to everybody. See, Jack Skellington is tired of being the Pumpkin King. He's tired of doing the same thing year after year. He wants to something new. So when he finds Christmas Town and he sees Santa Claus, he says, "Well, what do you know? Maybe I could do this." But what the problem is is. He realizes that holidays later on can't be done by other holidays. He, when he takes everything from Christmas Town to add it to Halloween, they think it's supposed to be scary and not f happy and joyful and everything like that. They think it's supposed to be scary. So they make scary toys, scary up things, and everything. And my favorite scene in the entire movie is this one scene. And it's the first kid who gets the present of Jack's. And he, he he's like, surprised, aren't you? And he, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he gives him the toy. And then he goes up the chimney. And the parents come in and they say, he says to them, what did Santa bring you? He opens up the box. He looks inside, pulls out a shrunken head doll, and they scream and they faint. <laughs> that was my favorite scene ever. It just, it cracked me up every single time. My dad, I watched it with my dad once, and he laughed too. But that's there's a different story in that. Okay, I'm not gonna go into that one. Um, I was watching, I was watching a. Anyways, I was watching um this. Okay, and I was watching another guy do this on YouTube. He's talking about his favorite movie, which is Buzz Lightyear Star Command Disney movie. Now I love that movie too, but it's not my favorite. Okay, my favorite's hands down Night Before Christmas. No movie can beat Night Before Christmas in my eyes. No movie will beat it. The reason why is because Disney was so against Night Before Christmas that they wouldn't back it in the box office. They actually had to put it on a Touchstones pictures. Okay, Touchstone pictures. That was a company that Disney owned because of its um its horror related stuff, and Disney didn't really like horror at all. But see, in there lies the key. In there lies the key. After it came into the box office, and I'm going to put it this way. In 1992, movies could go long for 1993 because I think it was in 93 when it was released. If it was a really good movie, it could be in for weeks, not even months. Nightmare Before Christmas was in the theaters for four fucking months. That's very hard to do. Four fucking months. Four months. Okay, four months. Four months in 1993. It was open for four months. And it won... Billion, uh, billions of dollars, millions of dollars uh, worldwide in four months. No, in one month, it won billions of dollars, millions of dollars in one month worldwide. Four million, four months, it won more, okay? It won a lot more money. And after that, it Disney backed it fully. And that's when, when they, two years, or 2006 or five, I think it was, they came out with Corpse Bride, which is also a very good movie. I really like too. But it's not, Nightmare Before Christmas to my it's not Nightmare Before Christmas. Later on they'll come up with Frank and Weenie and that stuff like that. But it's again, Nightmare Before Christmas was my favorite show ever. Favorite dog the best dog in ever in the history of ever dogs is in that movie. And that's Zero, because Zero basically will never die. He's already dead and it's a ghost. It's a ghost dog, which is a pretty boss. Anyways, that's my favorite movie, guys. Um, my other favorite scene in the movie is the very the the Boogeyman song. Oh my god, that was! Anyone tells me any villain in Disney is bad, they have to watch Nightmare Before Christmas, and then look at that one. The only person I can say is probably like is good as as evil as Boogeyman will be the crow to though because you if you're gonna kill a dog and make it into a dog, you're really evil. But the Boogeyman, oh my god, he is very evil. Very, very evil. He almost killed, wanted to eat Santa Claus. Almost killed Suze, um, I think it was her name is Susie. 
Yeah, I think it was Susie. I'm not sure. I might, I might not have Susie. I forgot her name again. Damn it. Um, Sally. Sally. That was her name. Sally. It's Sally. Sorry. Brain fart. <laughs> Sally. It was Sally. She almost, he almost killed Sally. And he is just so evil. And I'm a big fan of The Descendants, the movie series, by the way. The Descendants of book series. And I've been trying to petition the author of Descendants to put in Oogie Boogie as a Disney villain and bring out a character I created. And if I can, maybe I'll play him in the next show if they install him as the as a villain. Is Mr. Is I call him Oliver Boogie. Simon Powers is his dad, but pretty cool. Oliver Boogie is his name. Oogie, Boogie, you get it? But Oliver Boogie? Uh -huh. Anyways, so, and I also want to buy the science too. Every villain kid has the first initial, the first letter of their parents' name in it. So, Gaston is Gil. Uh, Mel, Maleficent. Evie, Evil Queen. Uma, Ursula. Harry, Hook. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. Uh, stay tuned. Stay cool. Stay tuned. Be more videos in the future. I actually have to work tomorrow, so I probably won't do one until like later in the day. But after that, um, see you guys later.